Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. And now we're proceeding to talk about drug abuse. But quickly before that, a birthday wish coming through. And this is from one of our directors, Harriet. She says, please tell, uh, well, please wish Mrs. Zeria to Okai Tete a happy birthday uh, from her husband and daughter, um, okay, Solomon Tetenai and Harriet and Emmanuel Mensa. And so happy birthday to Mrs. Zeria to Okai Tete. God bless you so much. And uh, well, good morning to Harriet. I believe that she is watching currently. Now, to, uh, well, today's Wednesday. So Friday, uh, we'll be marking World Drug Abuse Day. And this is an international uh, day celebration marked by the UN. It started way back in 18, 1989. And annually on the 26th of June, this day set aside to raise more awareness uh, on drug abuse. And here in Ghana, the Narcotics Control Board has started uh, by educating us on ways by which we can avoid abusing drugs. And so in the studios today, we have Sylvester, Sylvester Kumsen, pardon me. He's the head of education and prevention at NACOBS, and he's joining us. Good morning. Morning. I hope you're well. I'm doing great. All right. Is no. there a particular theme for this year's celebration, yes, if I may ask? There, there what is, is it? Uh, the theme for this year is a better knowledge for better care. Better knowledge, knowledge for, for better, better care. care. Absolutely. Yes. And if that's the case, let's get some knowledge on uh, drug abuse this morning. So break it down for us. When we say drug abuse, what does it mean? Yeah, when you, when you talk about uh, drug abuse, basically what we are saying is that any substance taken in, mm with the aim of getting some pleasure out of it, is basically in the simplest form, the drug abuse, especially when it is not meant for medical purposes. Okay. Yes, and then um, that is on that level. But um, one way or the other, all of us abuse drugs. Exactly. Yes. One way or the other. the other. Yes, if you say one way or the other, what uh -huh. I mean is that uh, at times, even at your home, if we know we have a first aid door, yeah. but there are other illness that might come that you feel the same symptoms like your sister or your brother yeah. goes to hospital, uh, the doctor prescribes a particular medicine. When he brings home, you may also feel the same way, one way or the other. You take it mm -hmm. without a doctor prescription. So once there's no prescription from a yes, doctor? Uh, uh, yes, b basically. But that is on the, on the lower level. But when we talk in this level, in context of what we are discussing now, that it means any chemical or any substance that is very uh, uh, well, injurious to your health that anybody would take with the aim to achieve some level of pleasure, then it becomes a drug abuse. So this is not about, you know, taking in cannabis and all those things. It's about everybody generally taking drugs yes, without prescription. Yes, generally. But I, remember I mentioned that we have first We aid, have, exactly. Yes, but on some higher level, that's what I mean. Okay. But in our context, what we are talking about is the taking substances with the aim of achieving some level of pleasure. What are some of the methods of administration if we're talking about taking substances? Yes, uh, people use various ways to take this. Uh, some smoke it, typical example oh. is marijuana. Some also mix it with food yeah. and take it. Some also take it by snorting it. Mm -hmm. In the case of like cocaine, some also inject it. Yeah. And other, so many ways. So these are the some of the methods that people use to take these drugs. I'm sure that there's a study that has been conducted as to why people abuse drugs. Yeah, there are so many reasons. Okay. I mean, uh, when you come to the, typically with the, the youth, you know that what we call developmental age. When, if you have a, maybe a, a, a daughter or a son or whatever, a nephew, initially they are very close to the family. But mm -hmm. as they grow to some level, they tend to be more independent. Mm -hmm. And they, more, they tend to more associate with friends than the family. So peer pressure. I Where see. the person wants to belong. Uh -huh. If the person wants to belong, then it means whatever that they, is going on, the person tends to want to align himself. So if there are negative, what do you call it, activities, then the person is likely that will join. It is scientifically proven mm. that peer pressure, negative peer pressure, is one of the main reasons. Some also go in because they want to forget about their problems. Okay. Typically with an adult who might think that um, after I have this problem, let me drink or take this and then forget about my problem. But in the long run, you know what happens. Mm. If you take it, you come back to the same situation. Some also take it out of uh, depression, anxiety. They go in for such a, what do you call it, drugs. Mm -hmm. Some of course also take it for as out of Curiosity. Okay. You talk about it. People want to 
actually feel it <laughs> rather than hearing it, then they go in for it out of curiosity. People also also do that. So there are so many ways that people I see. That's go in interesting. For drugs. But yes. then how do we identify someone who is abusing drugs? I mean, naturally we're made to think that once you lose your mind, then it means that you're abusing drugs. Is that no, really that the is only not, okay. it's not always the case. Okay. Yeah, that, the, the, the losing of the mind doesn't mean that the person is crazy or whatever. Okay. But uh, let me put it that way. But that level comes, that means the person has been in it to some point. So it doesn't happen almost immediately? No. So the sign, for instance, if um, you're at home with your son or sibling, whoever, and you know that this person is a very active person, mm. someone who normally loves to come close to the family, and all of a sudden you see the person withdrawing. When That's a sign. Yeah, it's a sign. Once you see the person started withdrawing, you have to look at it again. They should okay. be, the family should be interested to find out what is happening. Okay, let's understand. It's not absolute that that person necessarily is abusing drugs. No, no, it's not absolute. But okay. we, are, we, are, we are talking about signs. Signs, okay. Yes. How some people... Because maybe some people may be going through emotional trauma Definitely. or something. That is why I'm so saying that's... that the family needs to draw closer to the person okay. and find out what is actually happening. I see. So it's one of the signs that we have to... Okay. And again, where you see... Some, uh, the person performance at school is dropping. Mm. You can see that there's a progressive dropping of the performance at school. Then it also is a sign that we have to look out for. Or you know somebody who is very hard working, very interested in going to work. I'm referring to an adult. And yeah. then all of a sudden you see the person not so much interested. Gradually, mm. at times you go to the work, you go give the person assignment, the person will be fine wanting. Also, it's a sign. Mm. Or you see somebody who are all of a sudden have become very secretive, uh, do things that, you know, try to hold back. There is also a sign that we need to look out for. Okay. So there are so many signs that... Are these uh, separate from the effect it could have on you? Yeah, they are. I mean, okay. the signs are, what do you call it? They are the process. But the effect is different. Okay. The effect, if you talk about the effect... Uh, most cases, people think that the effect is only restricted to the person or the individual who is taking the drugs. But the effect goes beyond that. In fact, mm -hmm. affect both the individual, mm -hmm. the family, the family, and the nation at large. Mm. Because that's why when you talk about drug issue, it affects everybody. If you say the individual one, the individual who is taking the drugs, they will end up being addicted to the drug which is a, a problem of its own, yeah. the person might end up dead because of overdose. Mm. The person also might end up engaged in criminal activities because they need to get money to sustain the yeah. abusing of the drugs. Yeah. And so it becomes insecurity even in the house. If you ask anybody who has experience with a family member who, who is into drug, they will tell you, so it becomes a problem for the family because now the person, they are not sure about the person, things will be getting messing. And then it also come with a stigma yeah. to the family as well. When you talk about the country or the nation at large, the nation is supposed to have human resource, strong and energetic people to work towards the development of the country. Yeah. So if you find in a situation where a nation have people who engage in drugs, who cannot do anything. It becomes a loss to that yeah. nation. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's a very uh, broad thing that affects every aspect of life. Now, still talking about the effects, again, I'm coming back to the issue of, you know, we've also been made to believe that if you've never smoked weed before, if you're not lucky and you smoke it, you could immediately go crazy. And so that's one thing that has deterred a lot of people probably um, from giving it a try. If you haven't snorted, you know, cocaine or any of these drugs, if you've not abused it before and you do it for the first time, it can have an effect immediately on your mental capacity. Is that really true? It's true. Okay. Because it's very true. Because it, almost immediately. Because each and every one is different. Our mm. makeups are different. Okay. Our genetics are different. And so somebody might take the drugs for a very long time. And it can go on and on. Mm. Somebody might take it today. Today. And that will be the end of the person. Wow. So yes, so that is why it is very, very important that you don't even go near it. Is there help for people who abuse drugs? Sure, there's help. What kind of help? Um, you need a professional touch because it's a, it's a, when, it's, when somebody has substance use disorder, it's a specialized area where you need a professional help. And so the, when somebody finds himself in that situation, that doesn't mean at the end of 
the road. Mm. Uh, we have various, we work closely with treatment centers where people are referred to mm -hmm. and then they go through the, the process of recovering. So there's hope for those who find themselves in that situation. So this is more like a counseling? Yeah, we have a counseling. It goes okay. the, with counseling and other, what do you call it, uh, medication comes with so it. So break, break it down for us. I have been to a treatment center before where these people are kept and they're engaged in activities and they make sure that they don't have any access to any of the substances that they were abusing for a while. And then based on that, depending on how well you manage, then they release you. So run us through the process. If I'm abusing drugs, let's say I'm addicted to weed or to cocaine, and I walk into a facility to help, what goes on to enable me to recover? Yes, um, there are processes, as we just said. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a way of life. The person of taking the drugs has become part of the person. Mm. Anytime he doesn't get the drugs, it becomes a problem. Yeah. What we call withdrawal sy syndrome. And so once you are taken to rehab center or treatment center, we have to, they have to make sure that you don't, the, 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 what do you call it, the, the old lifestyle have to be taken away from you. So mm -hmm. you have what you call detox, okay. where they try to flush out the, the what the do you call system. it, the, your, your system. Oh, so I it's see. a, yes, you go that, and then you talked about the activities. Uh -huh. We have, like, they have a line out activities for each, all of them to go by it. And so you go through the system, follow it according to what is up there. And then when we're able to go through it, you have people there who also encourage you to, some people have gone through it, mm. who encourage you also to, the experiences that you might feel, especially okay. with the withdrawal syndrome and all that, they will encourage you to come out. That is why you are confined in a, in a particular place to help you to go through the process. Once you go through the process, it doesn't even end there. Yeah. Because once the person comes out, if he goes back to the same place, uh -huh. the same friends, he can suffer a relapse. He can get a relapse. That is okay. where families become very frustrated. Mm -hmm. That maybe we spend money, we've, asked, we've taken you to this place, and then you come back and then you are using it again. Yeah. And you should also remember that relapse is part of the recovery process. Mm. Yes. So once the person goes back, so that's why anybody who has recovered from drugs will tell you that I may recover. Yeah. Because they need to stick to the new lifestyle. But as soon as we try to go to the old lifestyle, you're going to have a problem. Do we have enough rehab centers in Ghana? Uh, I would say, no, we don't have enough. Okay. We don't have enough. What has been the challenge? The challenge has been that, uh, you know, um, people, what we have, for instance, majority of them are centered in the, the, the southern part of the country, majority. Okay. We How have, many are we looking at? Um, I know we have Kolebu additive units, uh -huh. which is uh, outpatient service. They render outpatient okay. service. Okay. They, they don't have residential. They don't have, okay. Uh -huh. Then we have a uh, Serity place, that's Accra Psychiatric Hospital. Mm -hmm. We have Pantang. Mm. These have are the official places. Official places. But there are some private oh, of, of course, we have private, as well. like uh, out of St. Francis. Yeah, is that House the of one at Ashaman? Ashaman, so? that's okay. right. Ashaman. We have, uh, we have uh, what do you call Compassion. Mm. Compassion is the action chapel, this thing, which is at, at the, the, uh, the Wenya, okay. where people are also referred to. So who, okay, they are referred. So that means that you have to see a doctor before no, no. you uh, can... Some, some see the doctor, some to the family. Okay. If the family finds out that this is what our member is into, then they... They can easily they, send they them easily, there. Yes. Oh, interesting. When you suffer a relapse, what happens? You have to go back? If you suffer a relapse, yes, you have to go back. And what is important is that the person shouldn't go back to their old lifestyle. I see. Uh -huh. it's, okay. it's very important. And it's a deliberate uh, what the step that has to be taken. There's a notion out there, especially, um, you know, in some parts of Accra, that you can smoke weed, um, and marijuana, and that will prevent you from catching coronavirus. We're in COVID period, so I want you to explain if that is really true. Because we find our youth engaging in that because they believe... That's how they protect themselves from the virus. Does that work? It's absolutely no truth in that. Okay. At all. You and I know that the coronavirus, we haven't been able to get cure for it. We know it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, even sophisticated countries are suffering. Yeah, you know, their health system is being solid. Yeah. Very robust. Yeah. But yet, look at the number of people who are dying. So, scientists are still exploring to see how best they can get a vaccine to deal with the situation. And so, rather if you smoke, you are rather worsening your situation. Mm -hmm. You are rather exposing 
yourself to once you get a this because we know that the COVID uh, what do you call it attacks the the lungs mm -hmm. and once you smoke one of the effects of the smoking is a weakening of the lungs yeah which you can likely get a lung cancer and all that so what it means that your lung become weak and then the virus in, in case you come in contact with you, you easily mm. become very susceptible to it and so rather the, we should rather look at the various protocols that have been put in place yeah. for us to follow that's the best way that we can go. But to think of taking marijuana or something mm -hmm. to, as a cure is never true. There hasn't been any scientific evidence to that effect. And final one, I just need to cross-check. There are some creatives who also make it seem as if if you smoke weed, it, it enhances your senses. And so you're able to, if you're a painter, you paint better and all of that. Does it have it's any not, It's not true. It's all lies? It's not true. Because the point is that when you take drugs, it affects your system, it affects you. It distorts okay. your brain. It distorts you. So how would you say that if you don't have stable mind, you think that when you smoke or do something, that will give you a clear picture to, to, to be to creative? Grow. No. Some also okay. think that when they get it, they, uh, you give them energy uh -huh. to work. You give them concentration. You yeah. go to school, children will ask you, Sir, uh, we, we've heard that when you take marijuana, you can sit for a very long time and study. Somebody can sit. 10 hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see the person just staring at the but book. Not... One page or two page. They are not learning. Because their mind, it affects their mind as well. Mm. In terms of retentive memory. Hmm. And all that. So it's, ne it's, not, it's never true. Interesting. I wish we could go on and on. But this is all time will allow us. Just a reminder that on Friday the 26th of June, the world is celebrating International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. And Mr. Sylvester Coombson, Head of Education and Prevention at the Narcotics Control Board, has been here educating us on drug and substance abuse. And so it's been a pleasure um, speaking to you. We hope that we can continue um, with the theme as we continue to celebrate this day. Better knowledge for better care. And so please acquire knowledge so you understand that drug abuse, um, of course, is harmful. And so on that note, this is TV3 